Hello and welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Stuart Roberts and I'm one of the co-founders of our service. And joining me on the morning of Tuesday, the 5th of September, 2023, is Mr. Josh Simon, who's the CEO of Jaxta, ASXJXT. Josh, good morning. How are you? Well, I'm feeling pretty good because I now know that all the records in my collection uh, have been properly catalogued by Jaxta and those artists will therefore be in line to receive payments. You're the man who's responsible for all that. That's true. We are doing uh, some interesting things with vinyl records and obviously credits, which is kind of our background and our origin, which is baked in the world of metadata and, and making sense of it so that artists ultimately get paid. Right. Uh, let, let's go back in time. So JAXA is the world's largest credits database. So anytime yeah. anyone has recorded a piece of music, uh, yeah. uh, JAXA, JAXA's uh, people have gone away and recorded who were the artists who were involved. And with those credits, uh, they're then in line for, um, for for proper compensation under the, the, the relevant um, uh, copyright laws, I, I'm guessing, is, is where broadly where, where you can describe this. Uh, that's been building up over several years, but you've since bolted on a couple of other interesting businesses to that. Talk to us about the origins of Jaxa and where that core business is likely to go. Yeah, so um, great questions. I'll break them down into bit by bit. So we collect metadata from crucially official sources so we're the only database of our kind that actually collects all that information from all the major labels all the major publishers all the major indies um recording associations all kinds of different societies and we take as much of it as we can and we we put it all together and we clean it um because it wouldn't surprise you that you know some rights holders have information x about one recording and a different rights holder has information y about the same recording and so there's there's ways that we can kind of resolve those conflicts and that's the real value of the database um so in some instances we then sell that information back to the industry but to be clear we don't process royalties ourselves although we are trying to play more of a role in helping the folks who do service royalties um, do a more accurate job because when they do their job better everyone wins what we've added on more recently is Vampa, which is a social professional network for people who play in the sort of music ecosystem, um, and then Vinyl.com. And I can see how an outsider might go, I don't see how those things connect. But our job fundamentally, or the mission statement, is to help creators get paid. And a big part of that, if you look at the sort of flywheel, is they've got to start by building a network. Uh, without a network, you probably don't get to the first show. You probably don't get to your first completed production, certainly not your first release to, to shops and everything. So VAMP is about that first crucial step or crucial steps. Jaxter is then about kind of sorting out your, your metadata presence online so that you know that the information is flowing correctly between all the various complicated participants in the music ecosystem. And then finally, vinyl.com is an e-commerce place to sell official records that are chart accredited so that you're you know, getting paid and connecting with your fans and um, the beneficiary of that long journey. Right. You were the man who created uh, Vampa uh, with, with your, your partners a few years ago. You've grown it into, um, it's been described as the LinkedIn basically of creatives. Um, so so basically you, you turned that business into a success, then vented that into, into Jaxter. Uh, which yes. which already had uh, uh, vinyl.com. Talk to us about your background before you got involved in Jaxter. Yeah, so Vampa was built in response to my time as a musician. So I had a pretty decent run as a musician um, from sort of the late 2000s, early 2010s. Um, and we did the Australian thing, so Triple J, lots of tours, um, you know, radio, TV appearances, all that kind of stuff. And it was great in Australia. But when I wanted to scale that in London, which is where I'm actually originally from, and just it's a larger market too, frankly. When right. I no, to no one that, in London knew who you were, basically. Yeah, well, I I had to start from scratch. And the starting from scratch bit's the expensive part, like building out the network and finding your first manager and finding a pub, uh, finding a like a radio plugger that you trust or even a publisher. Um, all of those things take years. And in expensive cities like, london los angeles new york berlin melbourne sydney any of those cities it costs a lot of time to be sitting around twiddling your thumbs while hoping that you run into those people and, and so at the time that i came up with the idea for vampa there wasn't really a technological solution for meeting folks like that um that was sort of 2015 ish and it was 
the heyday of the large social network. So, you know, the Facebook and the, the Twitters and the what have you, but niche networks were only just beginning to emerge. Dating apps had only just hit the scene. Um, so this concept of a niche network to help you solve specific problems was, was quite new. Um, and I'm not a coder. I mean, I can code HTML, but I'm not like a, a web coder. Um, sorry, a mobile coder, I mean. Um, but I, I have a mechanical enough brain that I kind of had an idea of what those foundational building blocks would need to be in order to launch a service like that. Um, and I certainly had a background in marketing. I'd done a marketing degree in, in business. And so I kind of, I think I had enough of the fundamental pieces in addition to running my own labels and publishing companies for nearly a decade. I had an idea of what it would take to start a business like that. So yeah, it was, probably, it was my, my first tech startup, but sort of my third time in business, if you will. Um, Look, I've, so I've met a lot of rock stars in business, but you're a real life rock star in business. This is amazing. Yeah, I think the weirdest moment was I was doing a tour with Keith Urban and, and I was standing on stage in front of about 15,000 people and I just sung the last note of the last song and Vampa had just received a little bit of investment and it occurred to me I probably need to make a choice tonight which path I'm going because I can't really manage people's money responsibly um, you know, and build this startup if I'm also going to be out there and building my artist career and so I made the only logical choice, which is you got to do right by the people who have just cut you a check. Um, and it was emotional, you know, but it was uh, an experience that not many people will ever have. <laughs> right. Fast forward in time. Uh, obviously, you had a successful exit of um, of Vampa into the uh, Jaxta vehicle, uh, yeah. and you're now getting ready to take that to the next level. Uh, helped in large measure by the US Congress who've just uh, uh, modernized the uh, copyright scene for music through a, an important act in 2018. Talk to me about how the um, the environment is is perfect for what you do. Well, that's just, it's made it easier for collection of additional royalties that were previously not being collected. Um, and for any new collection society that was going to be starting up now in light of new lords or just in light of some territories have never had PROs or CMOs before anyone starting up now, Jaxter would be a perfect partner in terms of some initial core data. Right. Vinyl.com's got everyone surprised. Oh, is it just the emergency emergence of vinyl as a thing? And uh, you've yeah. created one of the largest portals to go looking for vinyl records for us aficionados who like vinyl. Um, talk to us about the market opportunity there. Yeah, we just kind of see it as a digital crate digger's dream. Um, <laughs> and we are providing access, more access than most vinyl, doc, you know, vinyl um, websites. And we, we do that through a partnership with, you know, various wholesalers in different territories. So it's very much a store at the moment, but over time you can see how it, it you know, there's an opportunity for it to become a marketplace too, and something even bigger. Um, but a, a, as an industry, it's the only form of music that's sort of been growing consistently year over year for like the last decade. Um, and whilst an element of that could be a trend, there is undoubtedly something that's been lost in the streaming era when it comes to holding and owning the art that you love and the right. physical, physical experience. There's something like 51% of people who are buying right vinyl records don't even own a player. So we know that that's not even a barrier uh, to entry there. And, and it also provides the opportunity to do really interesting things like offer to frame vinyls and um really turn them into like meaningful gifts from one family member to another person what have you just a real e-commerce opportunity there uh, which we're looking to to build on with additional collectibles so we're still working on the, the roadmap there but we've indicated pretty much from the outset that we see vinyl records as stage one in the largest storefront that just offers fans the ultimate sort of collectible experience and that's that's the vision that we're pursuing Right. So three important uh, platforms now, now together in, in, in one company and uh, a new CEO in the form of Josh Simons to, to build it. Um, you've also got some important backers. You've recently raised some capital uh, to, to take uh, Jackson to the next stage. And Mr. Richard White showed up, uh, the, the yeah. man who created WiseTech. And he, he probably has a high net worth slightly higher than yours, Josh, I suspect. Um, uh, uh, what attracted Richard White to invest? Yeah, I approached him about Vampa maybe five years ago. And he, at the time, Vampa was a fairly, um, it was growing in popularity and it was somewhat well-known in the music space, but it, it, 
we hadn't worked out how to make any money. Um, and I think back then too, that was a strategy of a lot of tech startups too, was like- and Just build it and then figure it out, right? Figure it out. And he sort of had the discipline back then to say, figure out your model and then come back. And I said, okay, it was almost like homework. Um, but we've stayed in touch. We stayed in touch over email throughout the years. And every time Bamper did a funding round, I'd keep him posted and what have you. And I think he was just generally impressed with my commitment, most first and foremost. And then when we did pull off the sale to Jackster and you know, a few changes were made, I think he was ready to finally pull the trigger and say, we've known each other long enough now. I love music. You love music. Let's do this. And um, we went from there. Okay, so you've got a bit of money to to, uh, to to play with. What's the the growth plan for the next twelve months for Jackster? You'll see us lean into the vinyl piece the most. Um, in the background, we're doing really important stuff to integrate Jackster and Vampa, so that um, right now this sort of probably looks like a house of brands from someone on the outside looking in, but we will simplify that over time. Uh, but before we can do that, it means some fundamental. Um, core backend stuff to, to to link all these services so that they're speaking to each other and benefiting from the, the 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 very different types of metadata that we're collecting across the three platforms but from a front-end experience and from a public perspective i think you'll just see us expand the vinyl.com store like i said with additional uh additional forms of collectibles beyond just the vinyl record so that'll it's a big focus for the next 12 months okay Josh Simon, well done on, on what you've managed to achieve in terms of, of bringing together this, this interesting new platform. Um, uh, in, in terms of, of, of why investors should pay attention right now, uh, what, what's your 30-second uh, pitch in terms of, of, of uh, uh, how to make money out of this, uh, this opportunity? Yeah, um, companies of our size, you might call it a micro-cap tech stock, um, can really grow in one of two ways. You know, there's organic growth, which of course everyone's always looking to, towards, and then there's growth through mergers and acquisitions. And I would suggest that we're doing a great job on both fronts, but I can't say much more than that. That's okay. my pitch. Let's yeah. let's close this interview. Um, a lot of people will be curious about your guitar collection on the on, on, on to your right, uh, the, the viewers left. What's your favorite instrument out of all those? The the one that's the most colourful that you see at the end there. Okay, and uh, in terms of the autographs on the white one, there anyone anyone uh, we uh, the, the viewers rec would recognise? My mum's. No, it's um those are all <laughs> my, those are all my um fans on, on the last the last headline tour that my band did in twenty I can't remember I think it might have been twenty fifteen but um we had this idea that the the look for that album was everything was um off white. So we had this sort of creamy color and the backgrounds on the on the screens and everywhere. And the guitar started the same. And then I think we got about two shows in and we thought everything's looking how we wanted, but it's a little bit clean. Let's dirty this up. And so at the end of each show, we invited fans on stage to sign various things. And by the end of the tour, there was just signatures everywhere. Well, Josh Simons, thanks for uh, joining Stockton. And good luck on the next stage of the journey for uh, Jackster and uh, keep us posted about how things go. Thank you, sir.